travel with us to our favorite country in Africa. Uganda! <laughs> On our journey from Cairo to Cape Town, Uganda is so far our favorite place. We spent 30 days going all over the country, traveling on a budget, discovering the local food and moving around by public transportation. It's been a proper adventure with discomfort, adrenaline rush, we've overcame some challenges, encountered wild animals and even been attacked in forests. <coughs> but most importantly, we've learned a lot. Let's start from the beginning. Are you going to feed? <laughs> no, we're good. We're already two packed. Thank you. <laughs> we smoothly cross the border from Kenya, and it all seems very similar to its neighbor. We're boarding a taxi to Mbale, but nothing fancy. That's just what they call Matatus over here. Mbale is a small city, but we found a cute museum, and we didn't visit any in a long time. Our Kenyan outfits are getting a lot of attention and compliments. We're so happy to be matchy matchy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eunice. The museum didn't look like much from the outside, but Wycliffe, the only person working here, is doing a great job teaching us about his culture. For example, he told us about the importance of the circumcision, unavoidable tradition of certain tribes of eastern Uganda. And it's like a fairly heavy, I would say. Of the, of a hippo. I don't believe it. <laughs> it looks like a tusk of, a, of an elephant. <laughs> now we're hungry, so we're following the smell of the barbecue that brings us to an area full of street food vendors. And Lisa is trying Rolex for the first time. Omelette wrapped in chapati, it's a staple food of the country. You can find it everywhere. It's cheap and we've been eating it almost every day. Thanks to Pablo, our couchsurfing host in Mbale, we connected with Mike, his friend in CP Falls. We are always happy to have a local contact and Mike is taking great care of us, arranging a cool camping spot and planning an afternoon full of adventure around waterfalls. We are glad we packed our swimsuits. Jumping in the cold water is always great fun. So guys, uh, this is Papatos, botanical name is Papatos. We call it in our local language, Angurwe. Most of the locals always prefer using it like a local toilet paper. But it's really very soft. <laughs> if you cannot afford to buy from the shop, please just be CP Falls, meet Mike and use it. Mike will give you guys this local toilet paper for free. <laughs> but Mike is saving the best for the last. After casually asking if we are afraid of heights, he makes a call and before we know, we are upsailing the tallest waterfall. For 15 minutes, that felt like hours to us, we are moving down the rope until we reach the ground. A very unexpected but unforgettable experience. From Sipi, we continue to Jinja, a famous city for having the source of the Nile. And once again, we're couch surfing. Let's do a tour of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so here I've got the toilets. Is like the water point, so we got some like uh, water here for the showers, washing teeth, everything. Then, if we step in, we're in the living room and we have a fridge here, it's super fancy. The houses they kind of look like this in the, in the area, and uh, actually, it was a couch surfing for Christmas two days here in Jinja, but the couch surfer wasn't here. And uh, so, we tried to make some uh, Christmas spirit to be alive. So, hope we you tried. <laughs> And uh, if you want to move to the sleeping room, ta-da! Of course, there are mosquito nets because, uh, well, everybody e needs them. And actually, she's hosting a lot, so this is really just mm -hmm. a private room for the guests. Yeah. And she has a, her own room there. This is Christmas tradition <laughs> in Uganda. Hello. Super nice. <laughs> Super nice. Merry Christmas. But you're going away. We're going to Kampala. We're going to Kampala. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Then from Kampala, 
Uh, then from Kampala, we are gonna go to Murchison Falls and then to the borders to cross Mansion to Murchison Falls. Yeah, and then to Rwanda. To Rwanda. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Right after Christmas, we're moving towards Kampala, camping for a few days in the outskirts of the capital. Ooh, you ready? I'm going to show you how proficient I am. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I've been hearing for years that he is a horse rider, that it's easy. Let's see. Also, very interesting choice of outfit for a first lesson of horse riding. Paul, why did you dress all in white? To show you that I'm not gonna fall in the mud. <laughs> okay. Do you know how to stop a horse? So I did my first uh, official horse riding lesson this morning. Although I've already ridden like three times in total, but never with proper like teaching. And so, yeah, we found this table just outside of Kampala and we thought, okay, let's spend a few days. There's a camping just outside. And, uh, and learn, uh, for me learn, and for Lisa maybe refresh a bit her skills. So from, uh, from there we can, we're ready to do some longer trades and tracks. We're super much looking forward to. In the end, I managed to take four private lessons in three days. And we shared the last one with Lisa. There is still room for improvement, but I feel much more confident in the saddle. Wow, cool. So nice. <laughs> Pretty original. <laughs> Going to Kampala, we probably found the best hostel in town for a great price. Akacha Villa. So Lisa, is it really a chicken on the flag? No, it's not a chicken. <laughs> Who knows which kind of bird is on the Uganda flag? Mm -hmm. It's actually a crown crane. Not a very typical bird in Africa, so it's pretty special. It's a super nice flag, I really like it. <laughs> Easy to remember. Easy to remember, yeah. <laughs> Just after the morning ride on the Boda. Not our first, but one of the crazier ones. Oh my god, every time we step off a of Boda Boda, I'm like, oh my god, we made it, we're still alive. <laughs> yes, so my trick is to always ask the Boda driver before we go, can you please drive safe? Uh, we pay 1000 more if you go safely, slowly, we are not in a rush. But even though, like, it's just like, they, it feels like they don't anticipate anything, like there's a pothole, they're gonna turn right wherever happens behind them and so if there's a pothole going fast behind, it's super dangerous, it's so yeah. frustrating. They are really, Africans, ah. Africans are fearless, we even seen sometimes like on the tuk-tuks, the stickers of like, the one who fears ends up a slave and like slogans like this, so you can really see that the death it's not on their mind and they're, they're really not fearing anything and you can definitely see it on the way how they drive. But <laughs> at the end, uh, the Boda is the most convenient way how to get around the city, cheapest and quickest one. And uh, since we are traveling like the locals, we are risking the life like the locals. <laughs> we start the day with a visit of iconic Uganda National Mosque, located on one of the original seven hills of the capital, making it a perfect viewpoint on the whole city. Its construction took a long time, but it was finally finished in 2007, 35 years after it started. So we're going uh, up to the minarets, and this is the highest point in uh, Kampala. So we're gonna have a view over the entire city. Was it worth it, the 300 steps? The best view on Kampala. No, I think it was a very nice start of the day to, to see the whole city from a bird eye view and the architecture of the mosque is amazing. So we... Next, we are headed to Chaos, one of Kampala's largest markets. We are so packed. <laughs> two backpacks in front, two backpacks in the back, uh, plus the tent. But we love the tent. <laughs> <laughs>
On the 1st of January, the capital is sleepy and we're changing location to nearby Entebbe. We didn't plan much, with just a camping spot in mind. But once there, we discovered that the place had closed. So we're wandering around the neighborhood in search of an alternative. And we're with Olivia right now and she's super nice. She let us camp here outside of her guest house. Super nice garden and the cutest yeah. dog ever. I'm no. very happy. Super nice. <laughs> Everything is possible if you are just positive. Yeah. Coco, I love you. <laughs> yes, baby, yours. So cute. After setting the camp, we wanted to check out Aero Beach, the popular playing graveyard. To our surprise, we found ourselves at a New Year's Day festival, full of families and youngsters enjoying the music of the local artists. This was a great way to celebrate the New Year and experience a festival in Africa for the first time. Cheers. One of Entebbe's highlights that we didn't want to miss was the botanical garden with many birds and monkeys. Did you know that they shot uh, the movie Tarzan in this, uh, in this park? The rain eventually caught us and we found refuge in a Cafe Java a popular chain of restaurants in Uganda that never disappoints. It's time to say goodbye to Coco and to Entebbe, as we are planning to explore the little-known Sese Islands. But first, a little musical chair performance to buy the tickets for the public ferry. We've been amused by how people wait in line over here. Let's board! First class! <laughs> Four hours later, we are walking on the shores of Lake Victoria, passing empty resorts and looking for a place to pitch our tent. Let's go there! Now we're in uh, Bugala. It's one of the islands in the Sese Archipelago. And there's so little information online, like we really didn't know what to expect. What we knew is like this. Really heavenly landscapes, like lots of nature and like and discover the path. So we're on our way to discover a bit what uh, to do on this island. But let's start by what not to do on this island. Go! Ah! Many, 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 many. Ah! Putain, ça fait trop mal. There's <laughs> so yeah, well, we don't advise playing explorers going off trail in the forest. We stumbled upon a colony of warrior ants who clearly don't like to be disturbed. A bit traumatized, we are in a need of soothing meal back in civilization. Well, can you describe your plate? Let's try. So it's a mix of uh, very foods. That they call it foods. Uh, yeah, sides and there is pumpkin, sweet potato, yam. Greens, matoke, some kind of ugari. Posho, they call it posho. Posho here. and uh, rice. It's like a lot. Plus, we got uh, beans? beans and chicken is and coming. Chicken is kind of super healthy, no? It's and a big nice portion condition. for a very reasonable price. <laughs> hey, we're going to the, some mystical caves with uh, Olivia and uh, Joseph. Actually, yeah, the names are much longer. <laughs> <laughs> what is the full name? What's your full name? Uh, Joseph Samuel, something. Joseph Samuel. <laughs> Hello. The traditional carpet. Yeah, it's made the traditional out of the carpet. Grass. Made out of the grass. <laughs> yeah, it is the traditional carpet made out of the grass. How old were you when you started? It was um, now. It was from how long? Eh? Mm -hmm. I was five years. You were five years yes, old and you yeah, started yeah, to have yeah, dreams about yeah. this case. Now I'm doing four years. We just found a spot that was very hard to find because it doesn't exist on the map, we just heard about it. And uh, actually a local lady with her child took us here. And when you get here you're greeted by these uh, two people that live on the site and they are here to introduce you and show you around like the different uh, customs and the meaning of, uh, of this cave and, uh, and the path around. 
Yeah, so basically like the the path is paved with grass, which is a traditional carpet. And then there are different caves that you can enter. There is a cave dedicated to women, to men. Uh, there is a fire going on all the time. Many spikes from the from the ground and everything has some kind of meaning. The people come to do some uh, rituals and offerings. So you can offer uh, coffee, eggs, fruits, Fruit. money as well. And the guide explained to us uh, different colors what they mean and uh, how for example he got to be wow. here so He's... it was uh, through a dream when he was five years old he, he seen it uh, during his sleep and the so gods he, were calling yeah. to him i knew it was his uh, his, his calling so he, from then on he's been living in this uh, in this cave so for 20 years now he's been taking care yeah. of the cave and he lives here and uh, he lives off through offerings of people actually. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. No, it's been super interesting learning a bit more about these like traditional beliefs that uh, yeah. that live on these islands. Super cool nice. place. <laughs> Just next to the mystical caves lies a huge and very scenic palm tree plantation. We are running out of time and can't stay longer on the island, but we really enjoyed slowing down for a while as we have busy days coming up. Like, <laughs> we wanted to go visit uh, Murchison Falls National Park and we've been saying that we would go like for the last uh, two weeks since we're in Uganda we're like yeah of course we're gonna go and just yesterday we were like okay like let's maybe check how to get there and actually you need a car you can actually go with uh, public transportation in the national park and all the cars are booked out like I've been calling and texting so many agencies and impossible to find a car so for now what we're thinking is uh, going there and maybe trying to make friends in a hostel to join a car for the next day otherwise we're gonna have to skip it it's a shame yeah and also the rhino sanctuary and uh, so there's a rhino sanctuary but it's the same like you also need a car otherwise you have to hire one there but it may be a bit more doable so if we cannot do merchants and maybe we're gonna do the sanctuary yeah. We're going to keep you updated. Masindi is a long way from Kampala, so regularly the driver stops to buy street food from the sellers that rush to each car that slows down. Okay, so it's the second time we're forgetting something in Amata 2 in the small minibuses. No, well, we didn't forget. They got detached from my backpack and I didn't notice. Mm -hmm. But people are so yeah, nice. People are so nice, they're just keeping it until you come back. So we just take, took the Boda, came back to the stage and... They, Happy ending! They were there. <laughs> we're having a lovely breakfast at our guest house, waiting for someone who apparently has a car for us. We're all tripping! Woo! <laughs> we found the car, it's super lucky. I can't believe it. Our 4x4, four four. we're gonna do so much. This car lifts some... We have a crack on the window. We <laughs> don't really have any paper for borrowing it. No, no contract, no insurance, no nothing. <laughs> Just a test drive, check of the tires, getting some gas, and here we go. Woo! What? I cannot believe it. They're so huge. <laughs> they are called Ankole cows, an expensive and rare breed. Their majestic horns serve both as defense and as thermal regulation. We made it to Ziwa, a successful sanctuary that protects white rhinos in their natural habitats. So as you see the rhinos now they are sleeping and actually every day the same pattern. They wake up at 5 a.m., they graze uh, on the sun and then around 10 they are done, they are tired, so they go sleep all the way until 3-4 uh, in the afternoon so make sure you come or early in the morning or late at night otherwise you're going to see only rhinos like sleeping yeah we came at 10 and we still seen them move a bit yeah. finding the shade <laughs> <laughs> now they're snoozing all the people wait when the car stops everyone wants to sell their stuff it's crazy what did you buy? <laughs> Mangoes and banana. And we are still missing pineapples, right? Yeah, pineapple is the best here. Sex 
successfully entered the park we got the receipt so $45 per person for entrance per day for 24 hours uh, and then our vehicle cost us $11 so in total we paid $101 for 24 hours in the park with the car and let's see if we managed to camp and the driver is for free <laughs> <C 'est moi. laughs> Already from the entrance, we spot many animals just on the side of the road. Our objective for this afternoon is to do a small self-drive safari on the northern part of Merchinson before the sunset. And the grass keeps moving, so and it's full of life. With yeah. Trees. And I'm desperately looking for a shoebill. Shoebill bird, yeah. It became my new dream. <laughs> Today was a nice day. <laughs> We've seen the rhinos, and there were so many animals now in the merchant zone like giraffes, pumbas, super nice birds, elephants, elephants antelopes. antelopes. Yeah. And we were like driving ourselves so we could stop at any point, like much, much nicer. Yeah. We're only missing leopards, we still haven't seen one. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> By chance, we found out that there's a public campsite located on the top of the falls. The camping was free of charge and in the morning, we went down to see the waterfalls and wow, it's so impressive. Ooh. Good morning, Washington Falls! <laughs> Here, the Nile is pushed through a 7 meter gap leading down a 43 meter fall. Did you know that Merchinson Falls is the most powerful waterfall in the world? The day before, we booked our tickets for an 8 a.m. waterfall cruise. This cruise upriver takes approximately 3 hours and you have a chance to spot many animals in the water as well as on the banks. One thing is for sure you can't miss crocodiles and the hippos. Our favorite moment was when a herd of birds circled our boat and created an outstanding spectacle in the sky. We decide to take small roads back to Masindi and take a short break on the shore of Lake Albert where we are surrounded by many kids that are very excited to greet us. So how do you feel eating your mango? 20 people watching you. <laughs> we return the car and take the first bus to Kampala and from there, a night bus to Kisoro. A 17 hour journey in total that day. Yes, sir. <laughs> in the early morning, we reach Kisoro, where we're greeted by Peter, who takes us to his coffee farm, our home, for the next 10 days. After meeting his wife Isabella, we put down our bags and go for a short walk around the house. Kisoro is situated in the south of Uganda, on the borders with Congo and Rwanda. Its rich volcanic soils makes it a perfect place to grow coffee, and our host Peter happens to be one of the pioneers in the region. We are here as volunteers, helping the farm with its social media presence and marketing material. But we also get our hands dirty and help around the farm with anything that needs to be done. What is it? It's African cucumber. <laughs> so we're gonna taste it today. <laughs> Let's go. We are especially happy to learn more about traditional cooking and we are enjoying eating everything fresh from the garden. Oh my God. We are going to Kosawa. Oh, Kosawa! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm collecting herbs for when you, have, when you are sick for the throat. So this is what they do here. You collect rosemary, Avocado leaves, bottle brush, African basil, and guava leaves. You put it into boiling water, and then you add a little bit of honey, and you are perfectly healthy again. Let's see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening here? We're gonna put the matoke inside the banana leaves. And, the bottom, and the we're bottom covering. Of the, uh, 
yams. Okay, in the bottom there's a yams. Okay, yams. and we're going to use just one pot for the two vegetables. Yeah. Quick cooking. Quick cooking. So how do you collect avocados? You make a prayer and then they just fall from the ground and you just <laughs> pick them. Okay, cut. This is a good Come on. It needs muscles. <laughs> Oh. Paul, you are dangerous. <laughs> so you have matoke, sweet potato, beans, greens, avocado, and tomato fruit. Oh, so good. Yeah. So, so good. <laughs> and this is the chef. <laughs> Kisoro has many beautiful places to visit. And we are very lucky that Peter's son, Ronald, is taking us every day for a different hike. Does it look like we are standing on the water? Wait. Wait. <laughs> oh my god, Lisa, you're walking on water. <laughs> <laughs> One day, we even ran bikes to go visit the nearby Batua village. The room for the parents and the children. Ah, it's a big, big house. Yes. Let me see. Okay, I don't fit through the door. <laughs> I think it's for a bit shorter people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me try to fit in. Go, Paul. I will visit, okay? You think you're shorter? No more. I should walk. I should be fit. <laughs> ah, he fits. Yeah. Ah, it's super spacious. You have a bedroom there. You have the kitchen, living room, uh -huh. entrance, <laughs> patio. <laughs> So yeah, we've been to the Batwa village. We were welcomed by the chief. And we will see some, oh my god, they have huts, that's so small. We have to really be <laughs> scouting, like uh, crouching, and like be so thin just to enter inside. And uh, so at the Batwa then they made the celebration kind of for us. So they displayed their craft, what they can do. They showed us how they hunt how they make a fire out of uh, this wood and uh, there was lots of singing and it was not really like very moving the, when they were all singing together but what I remember <laughs> most is uh, how sad it must be for them because in 1991 they were expropriated from the forest evicted e evicted from the forest and these people are hunters and so now they're left like in villages without uh, ways of earning money they don't know how to be farmers. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's actually a very sad story. In our village high in the mountains, cars can't reach and building a house is a lot of work. So local kids can earn small money by moving bricks. How many <laughs> kilos does this have? It's extremely heavy. It's like a and this is like two year olds that are moving this <laughs> Wow. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> On our day off, we organize a trip to the famous Lake Bunyoni, where we meet Ismail and Innocent. Well, this was my dream. Hmm? It's Boat dream? on the traditional canoe, and here we are. <laughs> it, it, was, it has been your dream. Yes, yeah. and finally we do so... it. <laughs> and we finish the day in Arcadia Lodge a fancy hotel with the best view on the lake. Our friend Ismail shares with us the legends and stories of the area. So the Upside Down Island was called the Upside Down Island because sometime back uh, they organized a part on that island and uh, there came a traditional witch woman so 
she asked them to give them something to eat dinner they refused to give her then she cursed them she said it's fine if you don't want to give me i'm going to curse you so she left and went on her canoe then she was coming outside then she cursed the island so the island turned upside down back in kisoro lisa found the perfect souvenir Okay, so let me tell you the story of this jacket that Lisa wears. So basically the other day, she sees a guy on the motorbike with a super nice jacket. And she's like, wow, I would like to have the same. So then we figure out that this guy is the owner of a craft shop. We go there and they, they do sell some uh, textile and jackets, but they don't have this one. So Lisa nicely goes to the tailor and she's like, hey, could you make it for me? And she's like, yeah, of course, like, let's take the measurements. And now we are three days later and she just got her jacket and it fits her super well and it's such a cool memory, a nice story of like, uh, you know, you know who made your jacket, you asked for it and really I never considered before doing uh, tailor-made clothing but it makes so much sense. Yeah, so it's a, it's a nice story and a nice memory for the rest of the road and I'm sorry, it's like where 2000 meters altitude, you get out of breath easily. On our last day on the farm, we are making chapatis, as Ronald kept claiming it's easy. <laughs> okay, we keep adding flour, then water, then flour, then water. <laughs> the measurement starts to be very unclear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we use the whole package. <laughs> one, two, chapati. One, two, chapati. One, two, chapati. Nice, wow. Good chapati. Can't wait to eat them. <laughs> so we were failing and making chapatis. We had to throw a chapati in a And uh, yeah, he's doing a professional move, like throwing the face in the bow in the air and uh, using a special tool from uh, packaging to twist them. Two chapatis on each other. <laughs> Sorry. Priority to live action. Walking bush. Only in Africa. Even though we don't want to leave. It's time for us to hit the road again, direction Rwanda, and so we are saying goodbye to the coffee farm. And goodbye to all the great moments and goodbye to all our new friends. Do you now understand why Uganda is our favorite country? Thank you. Let us know in comments if you ever visited Africa and what's your favorite country. Thanks for watching! Bye bye! <laughs> ay, 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 ay.